Joining us now to talk interest rates and the Business Confidence Index for the third quarter of the year is Etienne Leroux, Chief Economist at RMB. But uh, first of all, Etienne, mm -hmm. it's your day of results. Yes, RMB indeed. being part of mm -hmm. First Round. What, what happens within an organization when you get uh, numbers like they, you came out with today, which really are, are just giving the rest absolutely, of the, the market you know, a hiding? Absolutely. I think there's a sincere sense of pride. I mean, it's, um, it's fantastic to work for an organization of that caliber. And it shows in the results, um, Alex. So um, may it long last. <laughs> and that story that Patrice suggested that, uh, that West Bank could one day be a separate entity, is that consistent with the way you guys yeah, operate? Yeah, I, I wouldn't know. I mean, the, the higher powers obviously decide about these things. Um, but for this interesting, though, yeah. yeah, once again, I, I don't think I can comment on that. But I think one aspect that Patrice highlighted is um, the cross competition, if you wish between West Bank and between F&B and between F&B private clients and R&B private clients or private bank for that matter. And that's always been a trade of, of the group and I guess one of the reasons why we're so successful. Well, hopefully the Business Confidence Index is going to start getting equally successful. It's well, let's uh, hope so. picking up in the third quarter. It is. Some good news it for is, a change. It is, absolutely. I mean, the index has been at around 40 for almost a year now. So to go up five points is noticeable. Um, sadly, it's not yet in that net positive territory, so we're not yet above 50 um, at 46, um, but we're moving in the right, right direction. I but think isn't that just a, a rebound from the really dark days we've had in uh, the first half of the year? Not necessarily, Alec. I mean, if you look at it, um, the improvement in confidence was quite broad-based. Um, it was four out of the five sectors that we covered that actually showed an improvement in sentiment. I mean, that's pleasing. I mean, that in itself, I think, is, is a good story. But once again, we, we shouldn't go overboard here. It's still tough. Economic conditions are very challenging. And as I suggested, um, there's still a small majority of our respondents that are still pessimistic. In other words, 46 the index is still below, below 50. So 54 negative, 46 positive. We're uh, moving in the right direction. We're moving in the right direction. Coming, coming from 40. But exactly. what was interesting was building and contractors. Uh, building yes. contractors, rather, that, yes. that subsector, yeah. uh, all of a sudden they got a smile on their face again. Yes, um, more so um, building contractors doing business in the residential market, uh, not so much on the non-residential side, um, which so is that's home builders, is yes, it? Yes, yeah, yeah. so property, um, um, real estate and building, building, building houses and so forth, uh, which is quite odd, actually, if you think about it. The economy is growing at 1%. And yet here we have building contractors in the property market feeling pretty upbeat. That is it because the banks are giving a little bit more I think home I finance? think you're spot on, Alec. I, th I think that's part of, part of the reason. There's no doubt that banks have become a little bit more lenient in, in handing out um, or giving uh, mortgage loans. But I also think it is a function of supply or the lack thereof. Um, Private sector investment in the property market, thinking about developers, for example, has been very, very low over the last four or five years. So I think there's a shortage of stock. Our sister company, F&B, and their real estate um, survey suggests that more and more estate agents are complaining um, when it comes to a lack of, of stock or quality stock, which is inhibiting um, activity in their market. So I think it is a little bit of improvement in demand on account of what banks are doing, but shortage of stock. Is it being reflected in house prices yet? Yes indeed. Once again if I can fall back on, on F&B, um, house price inflation for the last two years have been steadily grinding grinding higher. So year on year price inflation um, certainly on the up. Well that's some good news for South yes. African consumers. Yeah. So yeah. look I mean um, talking about consumers, um, once again I think we have to differentiate. Um, retailers um, selling to high income consumers are arguably better placed than retailers selling to low income consumers. Um, so that differentiation I think is is, is quite important. And I you guess you've got Woolies versus ShopRite. You can, all you have to do very is good look example, at the performance of the very good prices. example. And and then there are also pockets that are not doing too badly. I mean the third quarter for example we saw um, sales um, of clothing, footwear, um, DIY and hardware not doing too badly. Mm -hmm. um, so that little, that part hardware, um, perhaps to some extent talk to um, the residential property market. If you particularly go into wholesalers of non-consumer goods, building material particularly, have picked up um, quite nicely in the third quarter. So once again, talks to the residential property mm -hmm. market showing It's a nice to pull, pull them all together, but when you have a look at the new car sector, 
Now we saw that in Westpac's yes. results being yes. a little yes. muted compared with the rest of Absolutely. Fed. Absolutely. Uh, there's, there's your indices there. are, are really awful. Yep. No, that particularly in the third quarter, I mean, the index came down 15 points. So H how was that possible? The, the level is quite low, it's 28. Um, I think um, we had, um, we at the time in the second quarter, we uh, it was very difficult to explain why the index went up as much as it did. It went to 43 and now suddenly it came back. So maybe that's part of the, part of this, part of the answer. But I, generally speaking, um, if you look at NAMSA, uh, data, new passenger vehicle sales year on year has been contracting. Uh, that's certainly a discretionary item. It's a big ticket item. Um, people can delay the purchase if they want. Um, interest rates are going up. Most of that is being done on credit. So it is understandable that that part of the industry mm. is, is taking pressure. What is interesting, Alec, is that while confidence of new vehicle dealers have come down quite sharply, confidence levels among dealers selling second-hand cars are going the opposite direction. <laughs> okay, so, well, so, we got so interesting. Keep your house, go and buy yourself a second-hand car, and you should, <laughs> be, you should be a happier person. Thanks, uh, Etienne sure. Leroux, who's a very happy person. He's the chief economist at RMB.